Hey guys, this is Esports Money's ESM Mac 10, whatever you want to call me, and today we are on, talking about my vacation vlog and the International Four. Really quickly, I'm sorry I haven't put out many videos this week. Um, kind of pretty big issue here. I'm in a basement, so to speak. Like it's not below ground, but it's the ground level on an island. And we got a storm a couple days ago that was pretty terrible. 82 mile an hour winds and four inches of water in my room. So I was sort of mm, disabled a little bit. So anyway, um, talking about the International Four, there are some things that I really wanted to hit on that I, I feel like hasn't really been hit on by, I don't know if anyone's really talked about this, but uh, a lot of people are saying that it was, well, sorry, let me rewind. Let's Let's talk about the the group stage. The group stage was probably the most exciting Dota I've ever seen. It was uh, it was really well executed. It was really well done. Everyone got to play everyone, which was cool. Um, it really was probably the most hype period of the whole event, which is not really a great thing because you want the main event to be naturally the most hyped portion of the tournament. Um, so that was... I mean, that's... I feel like the, I mean, Valve has apparently got the key arena for the next five, I want to say, years already leased out. So they've got a lot of time to work with the same venue, and they've got a huge amount of resources, and I'm sure they're taking feedback from their last event. So I'm sure that there will be improvements, but the main event really didn't feel as substantial as it has in last years, in, in past years, which is, uh, I feel like, a big problem with it. Um, Another thing was, and this is something that was completely out of Valve's control and probably will stay out of their control, is that foreigner teams or non-Chinese teams didn't do very well um, for Evil Geniuses. And the way it was set up, knowing who's going to be in the Grand Finals as of Friday was probably a horrible way to go about doing things. So that's also kind of a big issue. Um, so structure-wise, I think... I think there needs to be a change in the structure of the actual main event. Um, I think the prize pool breakdown was pretty shitty, too. I, I really like how the top eight teams each took home like a year's salary worth of money. Um, but I would have really preferred if the top ten or the top twelve teams would have gotten a cut um, from teams two through eight, or at least teams three through eight. The first place prize was... I mean, that was great. I think that's. I think that was appropriate for first place. But for everyone else, I, I feel like it should have been more evenly distributed. Um, I'm trying to think of the biggest issue, and well, the biggest issue I had with this whole event was that if you look back at the patch notes for this year and you look at the patch notes for last year, I'm not going to go into specifics right now, but basically this year we had a patch about a month before the international, a month and a couple weeks, and we had the same situation last year. But this year the patch was... I don't know, five, probably ten times the size. Like, the balance patch was probably around ten times the size of the patch we got six weeks before TI last year, which is pretty substantial. Additionally, this year, we had Beyond the Summit and we had the, uh, the ESL-1 taking place between the release of this patch and the start of the International. So the teams really didn't get a chance to really feel the patch out. And because of this, I feel like the metagame in the current patch isn't completely solidified even today. Because the metagame always evolves at TI, but usually when you go into TI, there's something that you're taking. There's the majority of the meta has already been decided, and certain pocket strats sort of shape the meta once you're actually at TI. Versus this year, I feel like the entire patch was being figured out during TI, and it wasn't able to be figured out because people found things that worked somewhat well, and they were afraid to experiment because it's the biggest tournament in the world, and if you win it, you never have to work again for the rest of your life. Um, as far as the Grand Finals go, they were obviously the most disappointing Grand Finals in the history of the game. Um, I mean, let's, let's just be frank, they were awful. The Grand Finals were over in like f less than an hour, and it was a best of five between two of the best teams in the world. Um, and that's another thing. I don't know if the two teams that won this year were the best teams in the world versus in uh, in in 2011. I don't know if Navi was the best in the world, but they could have easily been the best in the world. In 2012, IG was hands down the best team in the world. In 2013, Alliance was hands down the best team in the world. I mean, Navi like, eh, I mean that's kind of a controversial statement because Navi was super strong that year as well. But Navi or Alliance, everyone knew that one of those two teams was going to take it home and that they'd probably be in the grand finals. And then uh, this year, we had no idea who was going to win going in, so I figured it would probably be a Chinese team because they're generally better mechanically than the Western teams. Um, 
But I don't know if Newbie and VC were the best teams there. I think the best Chinese team going into the tournament was probably DK, and they kind of kind of got screwed with uh, that interview that released their drafting strategy against EG. But I don't know if that's really what put the last nail in their coffin. I feel like they, uh, I feel like they did really really well, but they could have done better. Like. I feel like the reason that VG and Newbie won, because I feel like if you get to the Grand Finals, you won TI, so I'll just say that. I feel like if you got that far, um, then you won. So how did they get that far? Well, basically, VG and Newbie got that far, at least after the group stages and the, and the playoffs. They got that far by having a pocket strat that no one had seen before, and then playing to that pocket strat, which was basically their five-man Zerg strategies. It was their five-man just fight, 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 fight. And I feel like these were pocket strategies that had been worked on to some extent by both of these teams, but I feel like neither of these teams had really perfected that pocket strat. But once they got to the international, they started to realize that none of the teams there could really deal with this early game five-on-five -five aggress aggressive style. And so they drafted around it and they played around it. And that's what worked. That's why they both. That's why both of those teams got to the grand finals, which is why I think the grand finals was so poor because because there was so little time to look at replays and for the teams to really prepare to play against VG and Newbie because they were already worried. They were always worried about one game ahead. You have to be worried about the next game. You can't be worried two games ahead. You have to be worried be worried one game ahead because of the way TI was struck is structured this year and has always been structured um, and because the patch was relatively recent and teams didn't get a chance to figure it out I feel like no one really had a good answer for this sort of Zergy style and I feel like you could really see VG not falling apart per se but really struggling when they were figured out I feel like uh, like for example you saw how they always drafted the safe lane farming nature's profit. I think they drafted the safe lane the safe lane farming nature's profit every single game of the grand finals, and it didn't work. I think it worked one game, and the rest they just lost. And they just continued to draft it despite it not working because it is what had gotten them that far. And they didn't like they weren't confident enough to show any other strategies because that's what had won them these games so far. And they knew that newbie were going to go for the sort of five man Zergy style as well. Um, so I feel like I feel like the grand finals were a big disappointment in in that sense, and I feel like the the main event was underhyped because we saw the one of the grand finalists the first day of the event. Um, all of that being said, some of that was in Valve's court, some of that's not. A big part of this is growing pains in the sense that we're starting to get a lot more events, a lot closer to TI. I mean, imagine if we had an MLG going on while all this happened; it would be insane. Like. Either no one would have gone to MLG, or the meta would, people would have jumped. Like the games would have been worse at TI. I honestly feel like, in the main event this year, the games, the quality of games was much lower in the past, just because no one was comfortable with anything except for a few drafts that they had really well rehearsed, because the patch was relatively recent. The patch was way bigger than usual, and they hadn't had enough chances to practice it. Um, that being said. We've got custom maps coming. We've got a lot of things coming in this game, and the game seems to be growing nonstop. So I don't think that having a bad finals like this really hurts the growth of the game, which is something that I did I did honestly worry about for a little bit there because the finals were so awful, and the event uh, was not nearly as intimate as Ben Arroyo, so it, in my opinion it probably wasn't as much fun for spectators, but I wouldn't know because I wasn't there. Um, TI was kind of a far trip for me since I'm on the East Coast. Um... I think that's about it for the international. Um, one thing that I do really want to point out is that this prize pool is the largest of any esport in history, which in and of itself is a major achievement. Um, our community is... It's absolutely insane that, that we raise this much money for a single event. It Valve doesn't care about owning a tournament circuit. They want to have a big game that other people make events for, similar to the way Blizzard handled StarCraft, but even more hands-off than Blizzard. And Valve really wants to have this one event a year that makes people go, holy crap, people make this much money playing games. And this year, the International did that <clears throat> in a way that I don't think any event for any game will, has ever done or may ever do again. Um, I will be... I'm cautiously optimistic about next year's prize pool to see if we can raise this much money. And if we do raise it again, if we see a substantial increase in the amount of money raised again next year then I think we will see additional growth the year after. And if we see growth two years from now, this game will be something different. This game will be something that's beyond what World of Warcraft was and will be beyond what League of Legends currently is, which is 
really, really cool. I'm, I'm really excited about those possibilities. So that's pretty much it. That's my vlog on the International and my thoughts. I really wanted to wait a long time before I expressed my feelings or thoughts about the way TI played out because I understand a lot of the things I'm saying are kind of controversial, especially regarding the Grand Finals and the way the metagame worked. Um, outside of that, though, it was, a, it was an incredible event, um, especially the group stages. The group stages were some of the most exciting Dota, some of the most exciting Dota I've seen ever. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, hopefully I will have another video out either today or tomorrow, I'm not sure, it'll, it'll, it will depend on the quality of this video. I kind of have to clear everyone out of this big room and cut the AC off because it's so loud so I can record this. The quality is also very, very bad, and I know that's kind of an issue because I like to upload things in 1080p with, I mean, I, I just, I like to upload things in really high quality, and, uh, this, I don't know if this video will be like above 480p just because the native resolution on my desktop is so horribly low and I'm recording this in open broadcaster software per usual. But um, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, like the video. You can follow me on Twitter at Esports Monies. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash macx10. And yeah, I will be hopefully posting at least a couple more of these vlogs while I'm on vacation, even though they're not as much fun to do as typical videos. I'll be back this coming weekend, but I've got a... Uh, my school year is starting up this coming Monday, so next week will be a real, little rough. I'll try to get one or two good pieces of content off of my desktop at home um, going out next week while I'm back. Maybe even more than that, we'll see, but well, I'll shoot for one or two for now. And then after I get my schedule figured out, everything will sort of get back on normal. You can expect around three or four videos a week, at roughly, on average. So anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Sorry for the low quality. Peace.